Hello and welcome to Homespun Childhood. I am Sarah and here at Homespun Childhood I share all things literacy, curriculum, homeschooling, books, and more. Today we are finally jumping into Pinwheels Year 2 by Rooted in Language. Year 2 is divided into two levels, level 3 and level 4, and we will look through both of them. So let's dive in. We are going to start with level three. And before I even open this up, I want to show you what you get when you purchase this online. Penwheels is a digital program. And so you have choices with how you use the curriculum after you purchase it. So let's jump over to my computer real quick. So when you purchase Penwheels, you are purchasing a digital curriculum. That means it is not printed for you. You get all the files. And so these are all of the files that you are going to get when you purchase pinwheels. Sort your folder once you download them by alphabetical order by name so that they line up nicely like this. Start with your open now setup guide. This is going to tell you all the steps that you need to do, including links for your printing partner, Okay, so the link for the printing is up there, so that's why that's not up there. But it's, you know, step one, step two, how to print it at home, step three, four, five, okay? So definitely do this. And then you have all these different things. So you have your plan and prep. Sorry, they're opening on my other screen over there. You have your plan and prep. This is what we looked through already and all your other components that we've talked about. So let's go ahead and turn the computer off now and we'll jump back over to the hard copy. Okay, so now that we have looked through what the documents look like when we download them and noticed some of the different features, we are going to start with the plan and prep. This is where I recommend you starting after you have begun looking through the setup guide. So the plan and prep guide walks you through the different components of what this is going to look like. I know a lot of folks can be really overwhelmed by the um, appearance of lots of moving pieces, but really it's quite comprehensive and they lay out the printing directions and everything for you. So don't be worried. So we have our table of contents here for plan and prep. Let's zoom in on this. Okay, so this is level three. We have our introduction, we have our overview of the program, we have a section on pacing, which I think is really important, especially for this level, and then some terminology. So Penwheels is a comprehensive program. This is the only evidence-backed comprehensive program that I have seen for homeschool families for foundational literacy. It's comprehensive, and I say this because it includes your phonics, your spelling, your word study, grammar, mechanics, handwriting, reading, and writing. So you do not need to add in another program for language arts if you are using pinwheels, not until you complete pinwheels, which, you know, cuts down a lot of things. Okay, so then we go through the kind of rooted in language, you know, their whole thing, right? They're, they've got this whole tree model. They're talking about the different components, laying a path to literacy. Let's zoom out a little bit. Sorry, I have my letter tiles over here. That's what those are. So we have the laying a path to literacy. One of the things that is kind of unique to Rooted in Language is they really want to teach you like why you're doing this in the methodology and not just tell you what to do. They want to give you a path to then branch off of as needed. So they kind of go into all these different things, how pinwheels works, talking about copy work and French dictation and regular old dictation, looking at the different components, their teaching principles, and then we have the overview. Okay, so we have the Pinwheels program. This is telling you all the different pieces. So we have the educator guide, which we will look at next, the student workbook, the reading kits. The reading kits include your fluency sheets for words, sentences, and your passages. They also include readers that are decodable based off of the lessons that you're being that are being taught. We have the appendices. These have different games and uh, kind of movable pieces and whatnot. We have a video library. They have some information on shared reading and then all your video library access information here. 
The video library is really helpful. It walks you through examples of all the different teaching strategies of games, and they kind of role play out different scenarios that you might find um, with your family. Okay, starting in Pinwheels level three, kind of talking about where you know we're starting on on this level. If you are coming to Pinwheels from another program and you're starting off with level three, I, this is really important to kind of go through because Pinwheels moves at a different pace than other programs. Um, even though a lot of the phonics and phonograms might be the same as you've already been taught in you know another program you're coming from, a lot of the other components are not. And so I really do think it's valuable to go through this. So we're talking about the LA binder and the vowel chart. These are really important. I think the LA binder is something that is really helpful for students to consolidate their skills and be able to go back to. Then we have our concepts covered in Pinwheels 1 and 2. So if you have not done Pinwheels 1 and 2, you've done another program, this is letting you know, hey, these are all the things we've already taught. If you haven't taught one of these things, you might want to review that before you kind of jump in. The program does do a pretty good job setting you up for success with some of the key lessons from Pinwheels 1 and 2 that maybe weren't taught in another program. However, I highly recommend looking at the grammar, word study, handwriting, um, and reading and writing component if you are coming from another program because you know you might have covered some of the phonics and spelling but these might be a little bit different we have more on the LA binder here supporting grammar okay so they include grammar and writing because it's a comprehensive program and I do think this is really important this is based on the research we see a lot of things about grammar in the homeschool world and you know I am a big proponent of systematic explicit instruction. However, grammar is that one area where that actually kind of backfires. We don't need to systematically and explicitly teach, you know, the parts of speech and diagramming sentences and all of that. We really want it to be functional, focus on learning over time, not memorization, teach function first, um, discussion and debate. So this is really kind of bringing it down to the research level and integrating it into the program. They have their scope and sequence for level three here. Their scope and sequence is going to be pretty different from what you see in other programs. Phonics is going to review and cover short vowels, all the consonants, um, so we've already kind of done those. But then they're starting to bring in some of the consonant teams and GCK. Um, vowel teams are being introduced in bossy R's um, suffixes, two syllable words. Notice we don't have the silent E words in here. Those are taught towards the end of level four of pinwheels. They're taught as a broken vowel team. Many children coming into this program from another pro foundational reading program, whether it's one you know that I recommend or not, have already been taught this idea of silent E or magic E. That's fine. Just know that it's not going to be covered until the end of level four, and that's because they teach it as a broken vowel team. So you know, just stick with it and trust the process. Okay, so some information on printing. They are partnered with Making Family Count, something like that. Yeah, Making Family Count. And you can use their link and to, print, to have this printed for you. And the benefit to that is if you are going to send it out regardless to a printer, I would send it to their printer because you do not have to then tell them, hey, print this on this white paper, print this one on cardstock, hole punch this one, bind that one, all these nitty gritty details. So if you're going to send it out, send it out to their partner because all you do is say, hey, like just print the whole thing. Um, that said, printing is expensive for this program because there are a lot of pieces. And when you send it out to this printing partner, it's like 200 to $300, I wanna say, for, for a level here. That's a lot of money to print. That's because they're printing every single thing. My personal opinion, get yourself an EcoTank printer. They're like, I don't know, 200, 300 bucks at Costco and you will be set for printing everything for life. The ink is amazing. I'm telling you this after having had a brother laser color printer that died, like this, the EcoTank is, the EcoTank is the way to go and get yourself a binding machine if you really want, or take it to Staples for $5 and they'll bind it for you. I really don't recommend sending this program out to be printed because it's really gonna cost you a lot. If you are cool with the cost and you've got your hands full, just go ahead and do it. I did have this sent out to be printed because at the time I had an infant and two other kids and that's what was necessary for me. Um, you can print certain parts of this as 
you know, to get set up and then print other parts as you go. That has been my preferred method for pinwheels three and four is to print the the main things, right? We need the educator guide, you need the student workbook, and you need the reading kits. The appendices I have been printing as we go. Another note about printing is if you are printing this from a Mac, you need to follow specific directions. You need to actually download an Adobe thing that you don't usually use to print it. So do not just hit print and walk away because you will come back and notice that none of the like yellow boxes for the directions have printed. So you want to go to the Facebook group for Rooted in Language and search printing on a Mac and they will tell you exactly what to do. Ask me how I know this. I definitely have printed some things more than once. Okay, so then we move over to the materials list. They do have a list on Amazon with everything listed there for you. And finding your pinwheels pace. This is really important. Some programs do not go into pacing um, and kind of what that looks like. And so definitely check out this week of language arts section and think about, you know, the different ways you can you know, scale this program up and move it faster or slow it down as needed. Um, they kind of go into that into more detail. Teaching to your learner's level how to match the pace, how to increase the pace, how to slow down the pace, how to vary it. This is really helpful. They also have a section on how to use the reading kit for extra practice, how to expand, how to reduce. So Penwheels gives you more stuff than you will probably need. I'd rather have more than have to go and supplement from something else. So just know that if your learner is picking things up and you don't need the extra fluency practice, that's okay. Then we have our terminology, glossary of terms in here. Okay, alrighty. Let's jump into the Pinwheels 3 Educator Guide. Y'all, this thing is a beast. I don't know if you can see that. It barely fits my spine. Split this in two. Okay, there is a section about halfway through called take a breath. This is where you want to divide it up and split it and bind it into two different parts. It will make your life so much easier. Okay, so we have our table of contents here. Pinwheels is divided into units. Not all units have the same length. So definitely let's pay attention to that. So we have our different units here. Halfway through, we have take a breath. This is a like pause reflect, think about your pacing, all that stuff, and then we continue on. We have a note on keeping the pen wheels turning, about abbreviations and symbols. We have more information about the video library. Before you begin each unit, read it through. I agree with this. Definitely read it through in advance. And then we jump into our units. So every unit is set up the same way. We start with this new review literacy concepts and practice. This is the same list from your table of contents um, going through all the different components here. We turn the page and we have the breakdown for the week. So this plan, we have our days going across. Some units are more days, some are less. This unit is five days long. And then for each day, so each column is a day, it's going to have the different activities you're doing and what component of language arts they are broken down into. If there is a video, library video, you will see a little play button here. Let me zoom in so you can see this better. Okay, the video library videos are noted with a play button. You have abbreviations, reading kit, workbook, okay? We move into a list of supplies for what we're going to need for this unit, unit one, why we teach. We have our videos noted here. So here is our day one. We're going to start off with our vowel chart and um, in our workbook, there's a video about the vowel chart and about the short vowel song. If you are coming from another program, this is a really important unit to jump into because we have review of phonics and spelling from Penwheels 1 and 2. So you'll be wanting to make these binder pages to put in your binder and practice and review those from a Penwheels perspective. So in the yellow boxes here, this is the part that you are talking and this is like the scripted part to your student. So this without the yellow box is information for you and this is you actually doing the teaching of the lesson. So we have the binder pages included, what they might look like, 
And then we are continuing with more information for the teacher and then back teacher talking, you talking, including your tile setup and your, you know, different little poster. They talk about different ways to use and store tiles. I will show you my preferred method in a few minutes. Um, and on the Rooted Facebook page, Facebook group, they do have a lot of different examples there as well. Day two, we're moving into their smack dab rules. Again, we have a video here. Their smack dab rules are based off of phonics rules for short vowel patterns. Okay, teaching smack dab rule for the floss rule, smack dab with blends. So throughout Penwheels, you're gonna notice that they are following a gradual release model. That's the I do, we do, you do model. This is a way of scaffolding the material for a child. We can do this throughout a lesson, throughout a week, throughout all the different things. And so you'll notice here, we have our direct instruction, the educator says, then we have some guided practice. That's the we do part where we're working together to build the words. And then you have some workbook pages. That's the you do, the student part. They continue phonological processing throughout the program. We have some of our target words. We have marking text, day three, C versus K. Okay, we're reviewing pinwheels one and two here. Again, we're making a chart. Here's our I do. We're making the chart. The teacher is teaching the we do. We're building the words. We're practicing together. Then they're going to do some workbook page, copy and copy sentence in a workbook page. We will look at the workbook in a minute. Okay. Marking text, vowel in the mouth game, day four. Once you kind of get the flow of pinwheels, you this will feel less overwhelming. Okay, then we have some directions here. This red flag indicates this is a teaching strategy they're going to use throughout their program. So dictating words, these are the directions for dictating. Invented spelling. So this is another thing you're gonna find throughout the program using invented spelling. This is kind of going, you know, kind of behind the scenes of why we're doing this. Definitely check out the video writing sentences, okay. Day five, moving into word study. Rooted in language uses a bit of a structured word inquiry approach. I really like how they blend it into the function of what the child is reading. They tie it into the same, you know, kind of words that they're working on. And so it's all integrated for you. At the end of every unit, we end with this LA binder kind of summary page. And this is also something that I actually print out and use as a checklist. So I know that we got like all the big things we needed to do. So this is what you're placing in your binder page and this is where it's going. So smack dab rule number one, it's gonna go in your phonics and spelling section. This is especially valuable if you are using pinwheels but you already have a child who's reading pretty well but you wanted to fill in gaps. This is kind of where you can come to to start to work on that. I'm going to do a separate video on how to use pinwheels three and four with a child who's already reading but might be struggling with spelling and writing. So let's jump ahead to unit five. We're gonna kind of move through this one a little bit faster. Again, we have our table of contents here. We have our unit plan, what you need, why you teach it what you teach. So we're moving into some word study here using their affix chart. They explain how to set this up for you, talking about the suffix es and when to use es versus s, remembering the, you know, sp spell your base word first type rule. Okay, we're adding this chart. We're going to practice it. We're doing word sums, suffix s, es or s. So kind of lots of different structured word inquiry approaches here. And so you'll notice this unit, there really is not a focus on a phonogram per se, but we're really diving into the well, when are we gonna use the S and when are we gonna use the ES so that the child has a firm grasp on that for spelling. Okay, which one? Some little games here teaching their caution and common words. So rooted in language wording for high frequency words is divided into two groups. We have the caution words. These are like your heart words, the words that there is a part that is going to need to be memorized, not the whole word, but a part of the word. 
we don't want to memorize entire words. And then common words. These are high frequency words that can be sounded out. So they are differentiated here. So going through do, go, and so. And it's tied in again with our suffix es. So we're talking about why, you know, go changes to goes and going and do changes to to does, why is it not do's? So they talk about that and you have conversations so that you can remember it better. Again, we're tying in some more word study with prefixes here. I like that we're not waiting until the end of foundational reading to be adding in these prefixes and suffixes. Okay, starting to do some word matrices. Again, this is a structured word inquiry approach. They break it down nice and simple for you. We have reading challenge added in here marking the word parts, reading and comprehension, pinwheels party. So they have different pinwheels parties throughout when you do like a particular reading thing. Talk about editing with our traffic light list. Okay, French dictation and editing, phonological processing, word study again, a matrix, matrix here and our LA binder page at the end of the unit. Halfway through Penwheels 3, and this is true with their other levels, they have a take a breath part. And so they're kind of having you literally take a breath, pause, think this through. All learning requires some level of struggle. Thinking about the difference between destructive struggle and productive struggle. And they have a video on that on YouTube as well and then kind of what to do at this point, reflecting on how the first half of Penwheels 3 has gone. We'll look at one more level in Penwheels 3, and then we'll jump to Penwheels 4. So we are in Unit 11 of Penwheels 3, and this is where they are starting Bossy R. Again, Bossy R is being taught before many of the vowel teams and before Silent E. If you have already done that in another program, that's fine. Um, you just keep tracking and review that when you get to it. So I'm just going to kind of flip through this for you because we've kind of already covered the general layout. Again, the yellow boxes are what you're teaching. The vowel chart is really starting to expand now. We're doing word building with tiles. We're talking about two syllable words. They have different target words. Um, a lot of these units will have a word list and then a challenge word list. So if you need to differentiate this for a child who is reading, you know, a little bit more than what is in the level, you can use the challenge word list. Tying in they and are with our caution words. You'll notice there are a lot of multisensory strategies throughout here. We know multisensory strategies help learners retain information better. Starting to do some functional grammar here, two kinds of verbs, action and linking verbs. The grammar instruction here is tied into the reading and the writing, so it's not separate. Talking about scooping syllables. This is helpful for learning uh, multisyllabic words. We're beginning to do the plot arc talking about comprehension. Again, more grammar and mechanics here. A sentence has two parts, two kinds of verbs, types of sentences. If you have their Grammar Bugs program, this is gonna look really familiar. Or if you've taken their grammar class. Alpha dice for sentence structure, a little game there. And then our LA binder. And again, we have our, you know, what you need to put in it and where it goes. At the end of Penwheels 3 is Educator Resources. I didn't realize that this was in here until way after I did Penwheels 3 with my son. Um, definitely, you know, make sure you print that out. You might even want to print that separate. So the Educator Resources have uh, resources. So they have like a list of all your caution and common words that were taught in Penwheels 1 and 2. So if you're coming from another program, that's helpful. We have our extra practice list. We have, you know, specifically if you need to practice on handwriting or grammar or grammar and mechanics. We have our games listed in here. Go do, a memory game, mix and match, pronouns bingo, pronouns to go, run syllable run, syllables, 
spelling rule for C, like all these different resources. So make sure you print this out and even maybe print it separate. Word sums, word study, and then a what you need for each unit, quick reference list. And I think that is it in here, yep. Here is our student workbook for level three. Okay, we have our units listed. We have a color and symbol key. And then unit one is again, it's kind of a review unit. So we have our short, we have our short vowel review, sound blending, more sound blending, and then our spelling practices coming in, practicing that floss rule. This is where the student is doing that you do component of the I do, we do, you do model. Uh, practicing the smack dab with blends here. Vowel in the house, your little game chart is included. Practicing C versus K, more C versus K, some sentence copying, V versus VE practice, and then we get to the end of our unit. Let's flip to the next unit that we looked at, unit five. Okay, that was a suffix S lesson. We have practice for word sums here. We have um, more of their marking. You'll be using this in your intentional copy work, so you're practicing that here. Some practice with caution words. More word sums. Okay, and then the last unit we looked at was unit 11. So we have our page here where we would add in different example words like car and park. We're practicing writing it. We're practicing blending the sounds. I have, oh, I know why. My son was writing his name in cursive when we did this on the page. Um, more common words, caution words. There's a little bit of copy work built in and then you have separate copy work um, that goes with the readers in your reading kit and appendix appendices. Bossy R in the house. Okay, scooping is a really good strategy for multisyllabic words. And then, you know, the workbook keeps going. Let's look at some of the readers for level three. All right, so this is my big binder. My son started level three um, kind of as a review after we did Logic of English. I think we did Logic of English C, and then we were kind of coming back to do spelling, grammar, word study, because that wasn't really in Logic of English. Um, in the way that we needed it. So I do not have my readers bound like I do for pen wheels one and two because we did not use the readers. So I will show you what these look like anyways. Okay, so reading kit A is going to be your fluency practice. Okay, so we have reading kit A is your wordless sentence, paragraphs, copy work, and dictation. And then B is your readers and your challenges and retell a story. So for unit one, we have our word list and a challenge word list. For unit one, again, we also have our sentences and our challenge sentences. And so you can use these in a lot of different ways. I will be covering that on Instagram soon in our paragraphs. You know, as we get kind of farther in, you will have your dictation and your copy work in here based off of the readers. Okay. Reading kit B is where you have your readers. They recommend printing this on 28 pound paper. Um, it's nicer paper, it's like kind of shiny. And the readers are laid out like this. Now, I am not sure if they have updated this yet. I know they are working on updating it. I really do not like that this is not stacked right on top of here because you can't come to the paper cutter and like, right? You have to like do that and then do that. And it's kind of a pain. It is fixed in four and I think it might be updated in the new pinwheels one and two, but I can't remember. That said, you know, it is what it is. So here are some of the readers. You would cut these out and bind them. I will show you what mine look like as we get kind of towards the end of pinwheels three, the readers are having, you know, some more words here. We include the retell a story and then you're doing invented spelling to kind of label those. There are some challenge readers here like this. And so what I do with those readers 
is my daughter's bag. Um, we're on pinwheels too right now. Is I take the readers and I print them off and then I cut them and I staple them three times down and then I take washi tape and I do washi tape folded over to cover the staples for the binding and those have held up really well and they kind of look you know more like little readers so that is something that you can do if you so desire so the appendices I have printed here I would recommend not printing these until you need them these are things like your game pieces your word matrices your letter tiles all these different movable pieces your caution words all that you might be doing this a different way. You might be doing it in a notebook. So you might not need every part of this. So know that they're available, print them as needed. So I have pinwheels for printed off in two parts. Um, initially that was because it was a slow release. Um, now I would still recommend printing it off in two parts because it's not gonna fit. And like, look how much that is y'all. That's a lot. Okay, um, here you can also see the difference between an EcoTank printer and having it sent out for printing. So this one was sent out and this one is the EcoTank printer. Okay, all right, so let's look at Educator Guide part one. This is the second part of Pinwheels year two. Um, the Pinwheels years, you know, I don't really think you can equate them to a classroom year. A lot of the programs are gonna take you, you know, more or less time. So just don't think about it in terms of like first grade, second grade, or years even. Just you're on pinwheels three and then you're on pinwheels four, and that's that. Anyhow. Okay, so we have a like keep those pinwheels turning. This is like the same kind of information from pinwheels three, and then our different units all the way through. We have take a breath, and that's where I paused this book and picked it up in the next one. Keep those pinwheels turning is not anything different from the previous section. We're gonna look through um, three lessons units and pinwheels four. So again, we have our new literacy concepts and practices here. We have our unit plan. We have what you need, why you teach it, more references to the video library, definitely check out that video library, y'all. And then our day one. So this is set up the same way as Pinwheels 3. Um, talking about sound bugs here, they do include the bugs in Pinwheels 4, I think. The vowel chart, okay, video library. And again, we have these yellow call out boxes to remind you that this is what you're saying, this is the like, teacher talk to the child, and this is the information for you. Okay, word building with blends. Again, back to that red flag to note this is a strategy all throughout. This dictating word strategy is the same that you read earlier. Same with invented spelling and then partnership writing sentences. Okay, I really like that they break this down for what partnership writing or scaffolding looks like on the sentence level. Okay, we're taking turns writing sentences. We are still doing some sound blocking, again, videos for all of these things so you know what they look like and common things that your kid might do or might not do. Okay, we're working on number words, scooping, the flip book. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. More scooping syllables, so much scooping syllables. Head to Toes is one of their games. We start to have some um, stories in here. These, they call them draw and tell stories, the story of one. So this is kind of unlike why some of these words are spelled and said the way that they are and like how one ties into other words and is related to, you know, only and once and unity and unite and all of that. So you can tell this whole little story. Okay, reading aloud and marking text, and then, hey, look, we're talking about one, and we're also talking about the homophone. One, it's all tied together. Common and caution words, shared reading, the story of one, 
They talk about um, intentional copy work and editing and talking about your different goals. This is where you're going to get the most bang for your buck with any program is using intentional copy work and editing. It's what brings it all together. Traffic light editing, how we're going to hold our students accountable for what they've been taught. Grammar and mechanics. Again, we've got our little bugs here. I'll show you the bugs. Um, my kids love the bugs. I honestly didn't think they were going to, and they do. Both of them, the like almost nine year old and the six and a half year old. So lots of grammar bugs in here. We're bringing in a manipulative that's cute and fun. Grammar bugs, you can also, you know, the, that is a program in itself um, that if you are like, well, so grammar bugs, it's a program in itself. Um, if you are not going to do, you know, pinwheels three or four, you could consider, you know, grammar bugs. I really do like their grammar program because it is function based. Um, then we move back into the caution words, talk and walk. Um, we're doing, you know, more dictation and walking you through what that looks like. Then we're going to do a phoneme grapheme review. This is like the auditory drill from Orton Gillingham, if you're familiar with that. So this is where we're telling them a sound and they're writing all the different ways that you can spell that sound. So for example, you could say K and they would write a C, a K, and then a CK. And then at the end, we still have that binder page that tells us what goes in. All right, moving up to unit 21. And this is an example of a unit where we're really starting to dive into vowel teams. Remember, they're teaching vowel teams before they have taught silent E and that type of syllable. Okay, what we need, our lessons, why we teach it, our spelling rules, the vowel chart. We're starting to do some sorting. Okay, because now we have all these different ways to spell words. So why do we, you know, why do we do that? And they're going, you're going to go into all of that and really continue to practice it. Uh, we know from research that kids need five to seven times of experience making and spelling and building a word to move it to our long-term memory. So the more practice we get with that, the better it's going to stick. So a word sort, OU versus OW, and then talking about plus N plus L, spelling hour and hours. We've got workbook pages referenced in here. We're still working on grammar, it's tied in, all of this is comprehensive, okay? You don't need to pull anything else in until you finish pinwheels. Talking about pronouns and doing a pronoun sort. Doing some poetry and alliteration. We're bringing in different literary elements, rhyme, alliteration, rhythm, automatopoeia. Okay. We're going to jump over to part two of level four and look at a unit at the end where we are doing broken vowel teams. Unit 30 here. Why you teach, this is important for this one, it's going into why teaching it this particular way. They are the only program I have ever seen that teaches it this way and you know, for some kids, maybe they would have benefited knowing, you know, the whole magic E thing earlier and other kids like this might be really helpful, um, you know, depending on where they are with reading instruction. So we are still going through here with the broken vowel team. We've got our level word level practice in our workbook, more vowel chart review, dictating words, still moving through that I do, we do, you do strategy. Caution and common words, reading and marking text. We go into the jobs of the single silent E, job four. Again, talking about why we have that silent E on some words. Instead of just saying, yep, you just have to know that love is spelled L-O-V-E, we know that V likes company, so E goes with it. Like we're learning the rules so that it's not guessing or memorizing, okay? I think this download is a free download on their website too, by the way, the single silent E. They do have a bunch of free downloads on their website. Drop the E rule for adding on prefixes and, or adding on suffixes and inflectional endings. Drop the E rule going into the binder here, then we're practicing it. Place words, talking about here where and there and why they're spelled this way because they're all related to place. Words that share the same meaning often share spelling. 
It's like that would have been really helpful a long time ago when I was trying to remember how to spell the different theirs, right? And the different wheres. Say your sounds as you write. SWAT game is still going with our little bugs. Scooping syllables, syllable types. Okay, going into the different syllable types. This is another download um, on their page. If you're unfamiliar with syllable types, I do have a download on my page about that. Linking verbs. Okay, they're adding in some QR codes in here now. And then our binder page summary. Okay, so that is the end of Penwheels 4 teacher guide, educator guide. So we're gonna look at the Pinwheels student workbook. I only have part one printed, so we will look at part one, the same lessons we looked at in the educator guide and print, and then we'll look at the rest of them that are in part two on the computer. So stick with me. All right, so we'll start with unit 16. Okay, again, we were doing numbers. So this is the workbook pages that are going with it. Practicing common words. I printed mine off single-sided this time, apparently. Okay, including sentence writing with this. A writing prompt, again, we don't need to add in another writing program if you're using pinwheels all the way through. Okay, and then if we jump to unit 21, unit 21. Again, we were practicing OU versus OW. We have a passage, completing the passage here. We have a word list that goes with your passage right here. More completing the passage, this time using your word box. We've got our writing prompt. Okay, and we will jump to the computer to do unit 30. This is the digital form of the workbook. We've already looked at most of the units here, but I did wanna jump in and show you the last unit, unit 30, because I didn't have that one printed. So unit 30, okay, we have our vowel teams, dropping the E rule with word sums, complete the passage, were versus where, you versus use, writing prompt, and then we wrap it up, okay? All right, we are coming back in now to look at the reading kit again, I have only um, I only have the reading kit A printed off for level four. Um, we'll look at the reading kit B on the computer. So reading kit A again, we're going to have our word lists, our sentences, paragraphs, copy work dictation. You might not need to use all of this. Maybe you do need all of this. Okay, that depends on your student. So if we look at unit 16, we have our word list. And then we have the challenging word list, or word list two. We have sentences one and sentences two. We have paragraphs, we have our copy work, and we have our dictation. If we jump to unit 21, all right, unit 21, again, we have our word list here. And y'all, just because we have all this on one page does not mean you need to do these all in one day, right? You can break this up into different sections. You can cut this up if you want. Um, I have mine printed on like half a size and then laminated and then on a uh, word, a ring thing. And so we practice them in the car um, for my middle daughter with pinwheels too. More challenging words. Okay, so this is differentiated for you, right? If you're coming into this and your child is already reading fairly well, but you want it to fill in the gaps, you can use word list too. Paragraphs, we are using the paragraphs for reading as well as for marking. This is where you're going to be doing marking up text using their strategies they teach in the book. Our copy work passage, okay? We have an answer key in here, y'all, because we're getting there. So how to mark up the sentences and the paragraphs. I appreciate that this is there because some of this grammar, like depending on how you were taught grammar, if you were taught grammar, it might be, you know, what are we doing here? All right, so we will jump over to the computer for the rest of that. At the reading kit B for year two, level four, these are the readers, and we can see that they have updated it so that they line up nicely for paper cutting. Thank you. 
So you would cut these out and bind them into books. As we start to progress through the units, we end up, we get to some chapter books, style readers, some reading challenges where we're filling in the blanks, some nonfiction, some poetry, exploring bridges. So we're mixing in different genres. We have, um, you know, for fluency, reading it more than, you know, one time. I'm trying to get to the end here so we can see kind of where we end up in terms of reading wise. Fish and cheeps. Okay. So you can see as we get to the end here of the Pinwheels program that we really have moved into um, some of those early reader type books. Okay, so let's look at the appendices for level four really quick. Again, these are the things that you I recommend not printing until you need them. Um, some of the little games and that kind of thing. Okay, our common and our caution words. Do, 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 do. The bugs, you do get the bugs and the wings and the little bugs, the bug bums. All different size bugs, your cards your pinwheels, more bugs, foul chart, matrices, your word sort coin cards, your word sort cards, gosh, I can't talk this morning. Okay, then appendix C here, even more things. These are gonna be the ones that um, you're printing out on like regular paper. Do, 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 instead of card stock, okay? Woo! There's a lot here. Okay, really quick, I wanted to show you some of the resources that go along with Pinwheels program. This is the Pinwheels Flipbook. It's their blending drill, um, Orton Gillingham blending drill method. You can do it in a small binder like this. You don't have to though. Um, this binder method though works really well. So I have um, mine set up for my daughter right now who's doing pinwheels and I also have it differentiated. So like if you are doing, so here's pinwheels one, um, upcoming, and then I have pinwheels three kind of behind here, like right, you can split it up if you're doing more than one kid. So the way this works is you have your different cards and they tell you what position to put them in and you're, gonna, you're just gonna roll a dice die dice um, and change different ones and they have directions on how to do their little flip book thing um, video and all and this is just for practicing that continuous blending right because we really want to be going from cur that one would be really hard to say wouldn't it let's just do a different example we'll we'll come here we really want kids to be blending continuously across rot instead of er ot and so initially it will sound like er, ot, rot. We want to go back and reread it. But then we want to work towards that continuous blending where it's okay, what sound is this? Er, ra, rot, or rot. Okay? So for pinwheels three and four, you're gonna have your different vowel teams, your different blends, all of that mixed in. So that is the flip book. We also have the bugs in here. And so mine are laminated. Um, I have switched over to using vis-a-vis -vis the wet erase markers on here because the dry erase, if you leave them on too long, then they don't really come off. So we have their different bug parts and you use those to make words. I'm looking for a middle. Where's the body? There we go. Okay. I did not think my kids were going to go for these. They love them. So these are the big bug pieces. They also have these little bugs. Um, for word reading for their SWAT ga game. I use these both in manipulative form, printed out and laminated like this, and I have them printed out on just regular paper cut out that we use in our workbooks because my kids really like the bugs and sometimes like that is the win, right? If we can make it more fun, then we go for it. So those are the bugs. And I cannot remember if their word study bugs are in there as well. I think for Pinwheels 4, they're bringing in the word study bugs where we're, or grammar bugs, I'm sorry, word study. They do have little word study parasite bug things too. We have all the bugs, y'all. Um, I digress. <laughs> y'all, my brain 
my kid woke up early from that, the little one. And so now my brain is kaput. Where are all my body parts? I'm sorry if y'all are still listening to me talk to myself. I need a head. There's a head. All right, wow. That was way more challenging than it needed to be. Okay, so for example, in Pinwheels 4, they are working on prepositional phrases. And so we have our subject, we have our verb, we have our direct object, we have our prepositional phrase that goes up here, we add pronouns. They walk you through all of this, but using the bugs makes it fun. There is a game in Pinwheels 4 called Up End It that is about um, like phrases and whatnot, and my kids love it. I have never seen a kid like grammar like that. And I have taught like third grade, first grade, kindergarten, and third grade. We do a lot of grammar. It was not fun. Rooted in language has their own letter tile system. All the different programs do. Logic of English, they have theirs. All about reading, they have theirs. You know, cheapest way to do it is just print out the ones that they give you on cardstock. You can laminate them and put magnets on them or not. Your choice. I have tried a variety of movable alphabets. I have tried, you know, DIY. I've tried uh, really great readings, magnet kits. If you don't go with Rooted in Language, they have other options for the tiles. I recommend square over circle because you don't have to figure out like top, bottom, like it's just, there's either a top or a bottom and not you know, a circle. There's a kid melting down. There's a lot of conversation about the smell and the outgassing on the Rooted in Language Facebook group. Just stick them outside on a baking sheet on a sunny day a couple times and they're fine. This is the um, letter tray from Treasures from Jennifer and I really like that along with the square letters. Um, this whole organization setup they have outlined in the Facebook group about how to store them all and everything. I'm not going to go into that here. So of course my audio cut out again and it's not worth me re-recording. So you can watch me build a few words here, but we're gonna wrap it up at this point. If you would like to see examples of how I use this letter tray from Treasures from Jennifer to make words and do sound blocking and word chaining, I share a lot of that over in my pinwheels highlight on homespun.childhood at on Instagram. So you can go over there and check it out. Thank you so much for sticking with me. If you have questions on this program or any of the pinwheels programs, please leave a comment or find me on Instagram. I have reviews of other programs if this one is not a great fit for you. So definitely check out the other videos on my channel. And if you found this helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe. Thank you everyone.